Welcome to The Journey. We are now entering into our third week of lockdown and we still have, we heard from the president the other night, two more to go. And this places significant stress on all of us. Our relational, our social and financial anxieties and stresses are perhaps much more acute now than what they were just one week ago. We fear COVID-19. We fear financial loss. We fear relationship loss because relationships are also strained when we are engulfed by uncertainty and anxiety. And what makes this even more difficult too is the flood of different messages we are bombarded with each day. One is not sure what to believe. Is it more risky to lift the lockdown, to allow the wheels of the economy to start turning? Or is it more risky to keep the lockdown and sacrifice jobs and ultimately lives because people are no longer able to fend for themselves and feed themselves? Daily, people argue about these existential questions. Now I can assure you, I have no answer to these questions. You know, a fellow priest told me when the lockdown was extended of the suffering in his own community. People are literally crying at his gate, asking for food for their children. The psychological stress alone of not being able to provide for your children, or even the stress of not being able to offer someone who is begging you, haunts our hearts. What do we have to do in the face of such powerlessness? When we feel powerless, we feel that nothing we can do will significantly affect an outcome. We do not have control over the situation. It is much bigger than us. And so maybe right now, as chilling as it seems, the best thing that we can do is acknowledge and accept our own powerlessness over where we find ourselves. You see, friends, the temptation is to be in control, is to know. It's not within us sometimes to let go. We want to know, and right now we don't know. And that's very hard. A virus is in control of almost every aspect of our lives, and we simply don't have control. We are powerless. Instead of embracing powerlessness, we often end up wrongly attempting to ensure outcomes or results. Sometimes we think by doing this we are being responsible or upright or moral or even powerful. We delude ourselves into believing that we are in control when we actually are not. Often behind our need for power is a fear that drives us. Our need to control lands up an even bigger struggle because the more we fear, the more we try to control. And then we begin to realize that we are not in control. And so we go back and forth and this causes us a deep suffering. We are living in these Easter days and they teach us something about owning powerlessness. You know, Jesus accepted his own powerlessness. This is absolutely clear. He says on the cross, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He doesn't fight it, he accepts it. And we are here now celebrating the resurrection because first and foremost, Jesus accepted his powerlessness. And notice the paradox. There is actually power in his powerlessness. And so I want to invite you today to spend some time feeling your own powerlessness. The fact that you are not in control. It's awkward and it's uncomfortable, but it is the haunting truth that we need to face. Dare 
I suggest we are being taught the spiritual lesson of embracing powerlessness as Jesus himself did when he went to the cross. You know, friends, ask anyone who has been to Alcoholics Anonymous to overcome an addiction, and the first step for them is to admit that they are powerless over alcohol and that their lives have become unman unmanageable. This is not easy, yet facing our powerlessness will liberate us. It will free us spiritually for the hard weeks of lockdown ahead of us. And eventually, if we're able to do that, we will begin to rebuild our lives and experience, maybe in a way we would never before, a real resurrection. <music>